so, so I guess when it comes to faculty development, uh, one of the things that has been most successful uh, in my context is um, when you're integrating a particular technology, I, I find that personal relevance really plays a huge role. So uh, I can think of a few examples of uh, faculty members who have grandchildren or who, who just had a grandchild and, and that grandchild may be living um, say a, a few hours away, you know, by, by car or by plane or that sort of thing. And uh, all of a sudden, the tool that they've probably heard of many times before, Skype for instance, becomes something really relevant. Um, so that's when I'll, I'll often visit um, in charge of some of the professional development for faculty. Uh, that, that's when I'll, I'll come see them or they'll come see me and uh, we'll actually play some, uh, spend some time using Skype. And they've found a real relevant use for it uh, in that sense, which has been really good. And so what's interesting is they start to develop proficiency with that tool uh, and from that part um, they also start to see because they see, they're seeing their life as a lens, uh, their lens as an educator. So um, although they've adopted a tool, then they start to see the connections where this might be useful for bringing in faculty member, for instance, or from a different university, uh, using it in their class. And as long as we've got the solid supports, you know, proper bandwidth, uh, proper installations, and so on, uh, in the class, and if, if it can really run point and click, and in that case, it works really well. Um, in terms of network learning, I think uh, that sort of follows some of the same principle. Is is uh, first of all, I think if you use something like Twitter, faculty members have to know that they can start using it first of all just as a way of looking at the world in a different way. Um, so, for instance, if you were political, you may have followed the OWS, the Occupy Wall Street tag, and. Even if you don't even have a Twitter account, you can go to search.twitter.com, type in pound sign OWS or some other, um, you know, some other interest, and you'll notice that you can find a lot of information. Now, a lot of it's blabber, but to sort of find out what's important, what's retweeted, what are the most important stories, uh, or to use that in conjunction with a tool like Paperly, P-A-P-E-R dot L-I, um, and to create a, a daily synopsis of things that are happening under a particular tag, that really makes a big difference. Um, so I often use Twitter as not just a communication tool, because some people don't get that. They don't want to tweet anything or have nothing to tweet, or they haven't developed a network, but to first see it as a search engine, to be able to tweak searches using uh, hashtags. Um, in the case of free service teacher education, uh, there are a lot of educators using hashtags. Uh, for instance, SS chat is social studies chat. Math chat is mathematics chat, usually in the educational context. There's um, first chat, which is grade one. There is um, second chat, grade two. There is, uh, you know, phys ed chat, which is PE chat. So there's all different sort of tags. And once you tap into these tags, it really allows people to, to see that there are people using these particular tags to communicate and to connect to others. So when someone is ready to go beyond search and actually into communication, I get them to use tags. Well, first of all, they can use a tag just to search to see what's out there. But then they can actually see what kind of voice is being used in these spaces, uh, how people are using this to connect, to share, um, you know, to set up you know, classroom communi communications. Because Twitter is only the tip of the iceberg. Uh, in social networking. Often it's a connection that leads to so many other things. So a connection you find on Twitter, you may have similar classes, you may have uh, similar demographics, similar classes you're teaching, and all of a sudden that Twitter connection becomes, it goes to a direct message. So there's a private communication or email addresses are exchanged and then soon Skype addresses are exchanged or, or, or that sort of thing and where you can actually create some sort of global collaboration between classrooms. So I think it's not about going out and adopting every single tool, it's about taking one tool, adopting it very wisely, um, methodic, uh, you know, to thinking about specifically about how you're going to use it and how that particular tool helps to develop your thinking um, and, and then go from there. Not to say here's 200 tools, you know, they're all good, adopt them, but just start with one tool. So for Twitter, for instance, again, Twitter started off as a search engine to find common interest, to find important and current links, slowly kind of move into it, um, starting to develop your network, for instance, and uh, just 
making connections one by one rather than having thousands of followers or following thousands of people focus on just a few connections and then slowly uh, go gain momentum develop your network and go from there so in the context of research it's similar, I think, in, in many ways. One of the uh, tags that I've seen a lot of people follow is the idea of PhD chat. So I know there's a lot of PhD students that are following that particular tag. Um, certainly there's, uh, when you follow someone on Twitter and develop a network there, there's uh, not only information and, and uh, knowledge of some sort, whether it's in papers and that sort of thing that can be exchanged, but it's also support. Uh, I found that as a PhD student in my discipline, um, that I found it very, very difficult to, um, uh, you know, connect to people locally because there wasn't a lot of people interested in the same thing. So I used Twitter for a number of reasons. First of all, to get support. I also connected to people um, uh, around the world that I could later interview. Um, I also got a, uh, I, I could use the the tool for putting out surveys if you're looking at particular global samples and that sort of thing. Uh, to give you an example, um, I have a, a uh, researcher who's doing his PhD right now um, and he doesn't have much of a network. So he's looking at a large sample in his discipline. He's an ed psychologist. Uh, he's looking for a very specific group, Canadian parents, um, that is, Canadian parents with children, I think, six years and under. And so, if you look at Regina alone, there's, you know, there are a lot of those people, but it's hard to tap into those people. Um, what I'll do is I'll use my network because he actually wants me, you know, he wants me to help him um, get access to some of these people so that he can get his uh, 500 people in the sample. So a couple of times I've tweeted out his research um, uh, survey, you know, it's a, it's a proper survey with all of the ethics information and uh, all the information that's necessary. Then I take that form, tweet it out uh, to people who would be under uh, or who would fit that demographic. And the work that he did in such a short time to get you know, just a few, it's already a long time to get a few people, I could basically get five times the number of participants in something like that, and, and so he could achieve his sample much quicker than ever. So using networks is not just for, you know, uh, so some of the things I mentioned is there are, certainly research is an important piece, finding research, uh, current research certainly, the support, but also looking for sample sizes, uh, you know, look, getting your research out there, not only for doing the research, um, getting your samples, but also for the dis dissemination piece, which I really didn't touch on. But um, that's the one thing, if you believe in open, uh, edgy, uh, open research, um, if you tweet something, if you have a significant um, uh, network, uh, and that certainly was one of the things that we did when we actually created an open journal. We actually, uh, through Twitter, we found qualified uh, reviewers, we found qualified people to, to submit papers. Um, and it was just, uh, it was quite something to be able to create an open access journal that was fully peer-reviewed peer and still had all the principles of, uh, uh, of solid peer review, but also to open up not only in the development of the journal of, of, uh, of several uh, issues, but also in the dissemination, which makes it just so much worth uh, the time to develop a network, to be able to take your research um, from any stage and be able to share it with anyone the, uh, across the world, which is really makes it uh, research a bit more worthwhile than it is in, in some cases where only a few people can actually read it.